Hey Busy Bees, Thanksgiving is next week. I can't believe how fast this month flew by. But today I'm going to show you how to make a non-traditional turkey dinner using chicken. We're going to make a deconstructed roasted chicken over a delicious bed of potatoes and some decadent sides to accompany. I'm going to make a creamy and yummy mac and cheese and of course we need our vegetables so I'm making a brown butter green bean saute with some almonds on top. It's going to be delicious. Not just that, I'm going to save you time from slaving in the kitchen because this whole meal will come together in about an hour. Please give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more delicious recipes and let's get started with roasting the chicken. Here I have two lemons that I'm going to cut into large slices. I'll set them aside then I have some red potatoes that I'll quarter. Just a rough chop. I'll transfer them to a bowl. Now I'll work on my chicken. You can roast a whole chicken, but since I'm saving time and this is super easy, I'm gonna be using leg quarters and bone-in chicken breasts already butchered at the store. First, I'll separate the skin from the meat, get right in there, then I'll take some minced garlic and stuff it in there. Stuff it in real good. This is where I'm infusing all the flavor. Besides garlic, you can also stuff fresh herbs, lemon slices, other spices if you want, but I'm gonna keep it simple today. Now with my pastry brush, I'm gonna lightly paint on some melted butter over and under the skin. Okay, now that my hands are all dirty, I'm gonna wash them real quick, then come back and sprinkle some salt and pepper. That's it. I'm using my time as wisely as possible and prioritizing what gets cooked first. The chicken goes into the oven first because it takes the longest to cook. Now in a big roasting pan, I'm gonna add my potatoes. I probably could have added a little bit more. About three tablespoons of olive oil, some minced garlic, about two cloves here, a generous sprinkle of kosher salt. I'm using kosher salt because it's not as salty as regular table salt and I can control the amount some ground pepper, and I'll mix it well. Mix, mix, mix. Make sure each potato is coated with oil. Then I'll layer on some fresh rosemary sprigs. Looks like Christmas. Then I'll add my lemon slices. The lemon slices and herbs will lightly infuse our potatoes and chicken with flavor. Speaking of chicken, I'm just gonna lay my chicken pieces right on top of everything, like this. And now this is completely optional and you can go any direction here, but I'm adding some paprika to give it some color. You can also add some chopped herbs, chili powder maybe, anything goes here. Alright, this looks good. Now it's time to roast it in the oven at 400 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. While the chicken is roasting, I'm going to work on my yummy sides. First up is our decadent mac and cheese. I'll start with a pot of hot water and then I'll just add some salt. I'll bring it to a boil, then I'll add two and a half cups of elbow pasta. Give it a stir, and I'll cook it for five to six minutes until it's barely al dente. Perfecto! I'll drain it and set it aside. Now we'll work on our cheesy sauce. In my Dutch oven, I'm adding three tablespoons of butter. I'll let it melt down, then I'll add a quarter cup of flour. I'm making a roux here, this will help thicken up our sauce. We're cooking the flour so it doesn't have that raw taste. Then while whisking, I'll incorporate two cups of hot milk. I'll continue cooking it for about three minutes until it thickens up. I know the sauce is done when it coats the back of my spoon and when I run my finger through, it doesn't come back together. All right, time to add the good stuff. I have one and a quarter cups of grated sharp cheddar, one and a half cups of grated Gruyere, which is kind of like a sharper Swiss cheese then a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, then my secret ingredient, a quarter teaspoon of ground mustard. This will really bring out the flavor of the cheese. I'll sprinkle some salt and pepper to season it, give it a good mix, and let it melt down. Oh yeah, do you see our sauce coming together? It's so cheesy. Like me. <laughs> Perfect. Finally, I'll add in my cooked pasta, and then I'll mix it all together. 
The sauce looks a little runny here, but we're gonna continue cooking it for about five minutes in the pot so the pasta can absorb all that cheesy goodness. Yum! The mac and cheese is perfectly creamy. And to be honest, from here, you guys can kick it up a notch however you'd like. You can add some truffle oil for truffle mac and cheese, a little bit of bacon bits, cause who doesn't love bacon? Or you can even cover it with breadcrumbs and bake it in the oven to make baked mac and cheese. Really, anything goes. Mm. Now that we've finished our mac and cheese and our roasted chicken is just about done, we're gonna work on our greens so they're fresh and crunchy when we serve them. In a pot with boiling water, I'm gonna add my green beans. I'm using about a pound of green beans here and I'll just blanch it for three minutes just until it's barely cooked. <laughs> Perfect. I'll pull it off and drain it and then I'll work on my brown butter. Brown butter is basically milk solids in the butter that's being toasted. Taking this extra step to brown it adds a nuttiness and depth of flavor that goes a long way. In a frying pan, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter and I'll let it melt and brown on medium heat for about five minutes. Once it's nice and toasty, I'm gonna add in my green beans. I'll give it a good toss, sprinkle on some salt for flavor, and some sliced almonds. The almonds are gonna add so much flavor and crunch. And now it's ready to plate. I'll line up the green beans and make sure to add the toasted almonds on top for decorations. And then I'll add a little extra. So pretty! This saute brown butter green bean dish is an alternative to that classic green bean casserole dish that you find at every Thanksgiving dinner table. This one is way simpler and easier to make. And it's done! It looks so beautiful. I love the color on the skin and the potatoes are perfectly roasted and it has so much flavor from the chicken and the herbs. Oh, so good. Our dinner is ready. Look at our fancy feast, guys. Yum, yum, yum. Can't wait to eat and it smells so good. Now I'm gonna serve you a plate. We'll add some chicken, gotta get those potatoes in. Some veggies, cause you have to eat your greens and these are so good. And some mac and cheese. And now we feast. But since you guys can't be here, I'll let you know how everything tastes. I always go for the mac and cheese first because I cannot resist the creamy, cheesy, yummy mac and cheese. So let's give it a try. I'm telling you that ground mustard and nutmeg really brings out the flavor of the cheese and it's so good. I love mac and cheese. Let's try the rest. And now our potato. Since it sat underneath the lemon slices, I really taste that hint of lemon in there and the herbs are so delicious and it got to bathe in all that flavor and the chicken. Oh, so good. And I have to eat my vegetables, so here's the green beans. are still perfectly crunchy and it's coated in that light brown butter sauce and I really taste that hint of almonds in there too. I love green beans like this. I literally can make it for every meal. And now the star of our meal, the roasted chicken. The chicken is juicy and perfectly seasoned. I don't like my chicken super fussy. Just salt and pepper, garlic, and the butter really brought all the flavors out. You guys have to try this. This whole meal works well, not just for Thanksgiving or the holidays, but honestly, you can make it during a weeknight meal too if you have some time. It's a delicious meal. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna know what you guys are making for your Thanksgiving, so be sure to comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Uh, hold on, let me just make sure everything tastes good for you. Thank you.